You're listening to the Anchored at Harbor Park podcast. This podcast is sponsored by You Are the Answer, pure sports nutrition products for the pure effort you put into your training. These products are awesome. We carry them in our gym and our members love them. Super simple, pure, all natural ingredients with delicious flavors. You can learn more about them by visiting their website at www.youaretheanswer.com and remember to use promo code CFHP to get 20% off your first order. Go ahead and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platforms so you never miss an episode. Remember to leave us a review. Doing so helps us reach more and in turn helps us impact more people's lives. Now on with the show. Welcome to Anchored at Harbor Park CrossFit, a show dedicated to helping you find enrichment for the other 23 hours of your day outside of the gym. Here's your hosts, Jason, Dave, and Corian. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 77 of the Anchored at Harbor Park podcast. I'm Coach Jason. I'm Coach Dave. Coach Corian. And today we are, we are going to do a member question. Um, Madonna asked us about mobility, um, what it is, what its purpose is, and if we can do too much uh, mobility. So we're going to kind of break it down. I don't think we've talked about it for a while. Um, so this will be a good recap for a lot of people. Um, before we get into that, though, Corian, I um, got a good icebreaker today, but for the fact that it's about 80 degrees, I think it's a little off, but that's okay. Um, I think that we're all trying to get back at it after a busy week and or weekend. So I just wanted, on a positive note, so that I stop feeling so doom and gloom. What is your favorite thing about fall? Activity or thing or? For me, probably football. Football? All right. Football. Big football guy. Awesome. Mm, I don't mind the cooler weather for fall. Mm. Like, I like the fall weather. I don't like winter weather, so. Yeah. But I I just like autumn. I think autumn's a pretty time of year. The crisper weather at night makes it easier to sleep. Yeah, I like um, I like spring and fall the most for those reasons. Yeah. It's not super hot or super cold. The changing of the leaves and the colors is, are pretty, you know. But again, it's like it's also depressing. It's a double-edged sword because then I know that winter's coming. So I'm not trying to focus that far ahead, guys. I'm winter. like fall. So <laughs> winter I guess is coming. I do like the weather. I like mm-hmm. the weather the best. Um, I think for me personally, um, A, I know that I can drink hot coffee and not get made fun of for it being 110 degrees. I drink degree. hot coffee year round. I do too, but people will be like, it's too hot, like on a, on a 110 degree day. So now everybody will leave me alone and let me drink my coffee. But um, I think for me, I like that like once our porch is done, like you said, it's not too hot or too cold to just sit outside and kind of enjoy the evening. Um, you know, sometimes when we sat out on our patio, when it's super hot in the summer, like you start sweating within five, 10 minutes and it's not comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I do like this time of weather to just be able to sit out there and hopefully by the, maybe the end of the week. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Hashtag porch saga continues. <laughs> All right, you want to talk about mobility? Let's get into it. What is it? What the heck is mobility? Yeah, I think we use the word a lot, and I think sometimes that word gets confused for other things. So Yeah, it can be a confusing, a confusing thing if you don't really know what it is, but it's basically just range of motion. Yeah. You know, restoring range of motion, recovering uh, a certain range of motion of the joint. Specifically okay. in the moves that we do in CrossFit, that's what we're trying to do is maximize, you know, maybe our overhead um, lift, and you need to have the shoulders be able to open up in that. Um, if it's not your shoulders, it's gonna be hips. If it's not your hips, it's gonna be ankles. So there's, you know, it's working all the different joints and making sure that um, they're open and ready to to lift under all these maximal loads that we're getting yeah. into. Because if you're not, if you're not open in the shoulders, then you're putting extra strain in the T-spine or other parts of the body, and that's when we have injuries. Yeah. So let's take one step, but I think that's more like the purpose, what you just described. True. So let's go more like literally what is mobility in like a literal sense, okay. which so is like stretching. Stretching, mashing, 
Yeah. Anything you can do to to work that joint then? Mm -hmm. I think that the reason most people get confused when I'm helping them is because there's a difference between mobility and flexibility. And I think that sometimes people use those words interchangeably and that's where it gets confusing a little bit of, for time. Because you can be flexible but still not be mobile because you don't have stability in those ranges of motion and in that joint. So it's people who are double jointed or people who are very flexible but don't, that's how we can, you know, um, pop a shoulder out of socket or, you know, your kneecap or anything like that because the joint's not stable. It's flexible, but it's not stable. So they call that hypermobility. Mm -hmm. So it's people who are hypermobile like they really don't have an end range of motion. Like they can reach back overhead and keep going and they're totally mobile. So yes, what you're describing is then it's not so much mashing and opening up and stretching that joint. Now we're talking the best thing for that, for that person is to work a lot of stability drills. Mm -hmm. And anyone can benefit from either one. But mm -hmm. yes, there's specific people like who are really, really tight that sit at a desk all day or, you know, in a forward lean position, your T-spine's probably going to be tighter, your shoulders are going to be a little bit more erect. Um, somebody who's a little bit more hypermobile is going to be very flexible and they're going to have to spend more time on the stability portion of it and less time on the stretching portion. Well, that's good. Okay, so, and then we kind of already touched about the purpose, you know, recover or improve range of motion. Let's break those down. So let's start with recovery specifically and talk about like a muscle. And like why we do it at the end of a workout? Um, no, just in general. Like what does like recovery mean and how it happens when we do mobility? Yeah, so like today is a back squat day. Um, you know, you're breaking down and tearing muscle as we're lifting heavy, heavy and you know, you have a lot of lactic acid that can build up in those areas. By the way, I've seen a lot of PRs on the boards, guys. Yeah. I love it. And gals. It's awesome. Um, so when you're lifting, you know, you're breaking down muscle tissue. Uh, so it's really important that, one, you know, we warm you up. You're getting that joint mobile. So that's why we do dynamic movements in that warm-up. And then we go through and we do our workout. And then at the very end, we want to now stretch it and put it on either stretching or mashing, depending on what we're doing. But we want to, you know, recover that joint and keep it flexible. Because we just opened it up, then we just put it under a lot of load. And now, you know, when it's, when it's mobile and it's pliable, that's when we want to that's the best time to now take advantage of that um, range of motion. So we want to mash it down and make sure that one, it's going to stay in those positions where we want it. And then it helps bring blood flow to that area. Um, so if you're mashing, for example, with a lacrosse ball or a foam roller, you're kind of pushing the lactic acid out and then you're also creating a, um, red blood cells to the area, which brings good and recovery. So it recovers the area. Yeah. I think I try to tell people that a lot, um, one of the biggest purposes of post-workout mobility is mashing, is getting the blood flow. And I think that that can be immediately after your workout. So once we're done and we spend that five or 10 minutes at the end of class time, it could be later in the day, Dave and I will go home and do mobility at home. Um, and even a rest or recovery day, um, bringing that blood flow to your muscle is how it's going to recover because it's bringing nutrients with it. So um, it's really important guys to keep moving. You know, even when you're sore. Yeah, I mean, there's there's the two things, right? You wanna, you got the stretching with bands, right? So that creates a distraction. Um, they call it PNF. Um, and off the top of my head, I neuro. Ah, I'm gonna mess up the name of it, but it's a yeah. really long neuromuscular facilitation, something in that range, but I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, so I'm gonna sound really stupid. But anyways, it's PNF. I thought it sounded pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it creates a distraction in the joint, right? So what we're trying to do is, when you put your, with a band, um, your body's gonna try to fight that. And the band creates, tells you, kind of turns off your central nervous system and can tell it like, hey, relax, because the band has you and you're, you're trying to relax into that position. Um, with a contraction and relaxed, that's the main point of bands. It's really hard to demonstrate in class and have a class do that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we throw PNF in there, but a lot of times it's like, okay, just do the bowler stretch because we're still putting that lat on stretch. And it, the only thing I see uh, wrong with class sometimes is we don't do it long enough. We do it for like a minute. The goal should be always to hit two minutes. 
because what happens is we feel a lot of pain and that's what a lot of people do is they, they're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. In that first minute, your body is fighting it. Your body's in that fight or flight syndrome because something hurts. Um, it's your central nervous system saying, hey, we need to get out of this. This hurts. Let's go. Let's go. And so a lot of times we'll get break that because we're like, oh, it's so uncomfortable. If you can last over that minute, once you start getting in that one minute to two minute range, that's when you're making the most progress and you're making change in the body. Because what happens is then after the minute, your central nervous system says, hey, you're not moving out of this. So I can keep sending pain signals or we can relax and we can just go with it. And then that's when we see change. Mm -hmm. So the main point of stretching would be to get in that two minute range and above. Yeah, I just really try to focus because you always give me good... Um, stretches and I just really focus on my breathing for yeah. that first minute and you're right then once I can get through that first minute my body starts to relax and I can almost almost enjoy and I don't have to like focus so heavily on my breathing my breathing will become much more natural and relaxed um, but it's I almost, just it's almost like meditation like you want to yeah. You want to really control your breathing, right? So your nose breathing is the best. Just concentrate, close your eyes, almost feel like you're going to sleep. Um, and that's when you're going to really see a lot of benefits. So if you're, if you're fighting it and you're clenching your jaw, you notice that on yourself, then your, your goal should be to really relax, breathe, just concentrate on that breathing. It's like yoga or meditation. And then uh, you'll, feel, you'll feel a lot better when you come out of it. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, I always feel better when I'm done doing it and um you know we've been working a lot on my mobility and everything and it's been going really well mm -hmm. i feel like uh just last week i was able to do that overhead plate stretch and actually touch the plate to the floor without breaking up my core which i've never been able to do yeah. so i was pretty excited about that and then i feel like that's translating into you know all my lifts and all my stuff so yeah because that yeah i mean for that stretch Specifically, it's working stability in the shoulder. It's also opening you up and also working your core. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's basically putting you in that overhead position where a lot of us would break normally and, you know, maybe break in the not squeezing down our belly and then we're arcing and putting a lot of pressure on the low back. I think so. that, maybe I'm getting totally off topic maybe. here, but I think that sometimes that's the reason that people don't enjoy the mobility aspect as much or the one, because they, it's not, you're not going to see instant rewards for it. Like, let's be honest. Um, you know, Dave, you post a lot of videos. Unless you actually sat down and videoed yourself or took a picture of yourself, you're not going to see that your shoulders are much more open in that position. And, you know, or uh, maybe that your snatch went up weights or anything like that. But it's that consistency. I mean, me and you have been working together for six months. And um, my mobility is a big reason why I can't or have been unable to handstand walk. So the mobility might not, I, I still don't necessarily always see like progress in the mobility and stretching itself, but I'm seeing progress in my workouts and in my move. So I guess, you know, for those who feel like it's kind of a quote unquote waste of time, like just put it, like let it equate to the things that you're doing and how is it helping you. And then when you see that progress, you'll be more apt to spend those five, 10 minutes doing it. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it improves your, it improves the lift or it improves your gymnastics, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, but it's also preventing injury. Because if you are- True that. If you're super tight and you're trying to put yourself through handstand walking when your shoulders aren't ready, they're super tight or, um, you know, you're just putting unnecessary pressure on that shoulder joint and that's when we have injuries, you know, like a tear or whatever, because your shoulder is stabilizing and not meant to hold, or it is meant to hold all that, that load, but if you're super tight and you're not activating and able to activate the right muscles because you yep. can't internally or externally rotate the shoulders, that's when we're going to have injuries because then um, it's going to put unnecessary pressure onto those secondary muscles. Um, yeah. The muscles that aren't, that are like, hey, your shoulder isn't open, so I can't get the lats to fire. So now I'm going to put extra pressure up here in the traps and then on your AC joint and then in your rotators because that's what's trying to stabilize when you can externally rotate the shoulder. Now my lats are engaged, I can really squeeze down that. So, so this kind of gets into the second purpose, which is improving range of motion. Yeah, right. So and that you, you can do movements safely and fully, right. effectively. I mean, that's one of the reasons we started working together is because why? I was injured, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and then, then, so I guess like the other type of mobility would be myofascial release, which is when we reuse it with lacrosse balls, um, a lot of... That would be in the recovery. Yes, yes, it would be, well, I mean, it would, re, it would in, improve your range of motion as well. Um, 
it's just a different tool and a different reason, right? So like a lot of times you can, like my pec is really, really tight and you can feel the knots in there. So putting it on stretch with a, with a band, it'll help. It's not really gonna smooth those muscle fibers out or release the fascia. That's and the way I describe fascia is if you took your hand and you said your hand and you put it inside of a sock, that's how your, um, your muscle sits inside of a sheath and it's called the fascia. So when your muscle gets really, really tight, our muscle fibers are like interwoven like fabric of a shirt or, or sock, whatever, cotton like that, and they get knotted up because we put mm -hmm. it under a lot of strain. The only way to really get that out, that those knots, is to smooth it out. So you use a foam roller or you use a lacrosse ball. Right. To, to so I guess I, I look at that kind of thing as recovery, right. and then like the stretching is, is improving the range of motion. I think the lacrosse ball would re improve range of motion. Well, there, we there's going to be gray areas joint. where both th right. things do both, but yeah. I'd say like the primary. That's true. Primary, primary purpose. Purpose of the cross correct. balls. Correct. Yeah. You are correct. That's yeah. And this is where fun with words happen because we all describe things very differently and visualize things differently and use different choice of words. So. Um, Everything we do in this gym and in fitness and in health is going to have gray areas. So knowing yeah. that things overlap and can yeah. do different things is exactly. good. Exactly. Um, so well, let's go to, and we kind of briefly touched on it, but Madonna's question, can we do too much? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> so let me type my notes here so we can make sure we have notes for this show. Um, but yes, you can do too much if you're hypermobile. Um, if somebody's like, like Madonna, for example, he says he's double jointed. If he were to just sit there and do mobility all the time, he doesn't need more mobility. He's already mobile, his body can already flex, and he doesn't have that problem. So in Madonna's case, yes, too much mobility. You need more stability and strength building to uh, stabilize your joints. Mm -hmm. um, you, you still will benefit from some myofascial release and all that. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to be spending like me or Corian, you know, extra time to open up our shoulders because we're going to do handstand walking or snatching today. Because your shoulders are already open. You're, mm -hmm. you're pretty, the only thing you would need is a good warm up to get blood flow to those shoulders, make sure that they're ready. Um, and then extra time and stabilizing so some more accessory work would be beneficial to him. And I think that that is not as common, correct? Right. Uh, correct. I would say. 95 percent of the people like you all know we'd go up and tell you that like you're hyper mobile if you if you think like i might be but i'm not sure probably not yeah i think too one of the big benefits for people who are hyper mobile like madhana is when we i mean we say this all the time everybody needs to focus on their warm-ups but we, when you're hypermobile and you're trying to get those those muscles to stabilize, then we really need to focus on those warm ups. Like what's firing, what's uh, pressing, what's pulling, what's doing all those things. Because if you're just running through those warm ups, you're not getting the smaller, more um, fine motor skill muscles to stabilize and brace the joint to get ready for low. So. I mean, we all need to focus on our warm-ups a little bit more on what muscles are firing and what they're doing. But if you're hypermobile, I would say that that warm-up at the beginning of class is even more important for you. Yeah, and I, I do think that sometimes, like, mobility coaches, like, I consider myself a mobility coach because um, I focus a lot on mobility and recovery, range of motion, all that stuff. Um, Kelly Starrett is one of my people that I really follow. Um, really, I mean, I've taken his class, his online course, um, and he's somebody I look up to. A lot of people tend to say like, oh, oh Kelly Starr, that's all he does is mobility and too much mashing, that's bad. Well, like, if you watch his stuff and you really follow, it's, there's a little bit of mashing, there's a little bit of stretching, but there's a lot of stability stuff in there too. There's a lot of components in there that he's, okay, say, open up the joint capsule, yes, get it to recover. Um, here's some things you can do. And then he puts in a lot of stability stuff and I think that gets overlooked. Same with me. Like, I, some of my videos, I do put out shoulder, here's some shoulder drills you can do stability stuff. And it looks like stretching, but it's really like stuff that you would get from a, a physical therapist if you went there for a shoulder rehab, you know, like it looks like I'm stretching and I'm trying to, but I'm doing, you know, more mm -hmm. recovery of the joint or trying to get the shoulder blade to move properly in the shoulder because yeah. some people have a frozen shoulder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it looks like mobility, 
but it's improving range of motion, but it's actually a stability drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think too, that people get very overwhelmed with like the amount of mobility and, and stretching and stuff that they might need to do. I know for me, me and you talk about it all the time. I'm like, I don't have time to take care of all of that stuff. But I found if you're like, hey, at the end of your workout, here's you know a list of five things I want you to do for five to 10 minutes. That seems very doable to me. I can chunk it down. I'm like, okay, five extra minutes on the end of my workout. I can. And then I end up getting in a rhythm and I end up probably spending more time than what you, and doing extra things. Cause now I'm like, oh, well this would feel good right now. And this would feel good. And I think that, um, but even at the end of the day, if I only did the five things you listed or the three things you listed, doing those three things versus doing nothing is so much more beneficial. Yeah, that's how I was, I'd say keep the list short. So yeah. To make yeah. it easier mentally to do. Yeah, because just like anything, doing something is better than nothing. Right, and like, to be honest, the, the, the five to ten minutes we spend at the end of class isn't anywhere that anybody needs. Like, we need more. We could use 15 to 20 minutes on that. Like people should be spending extra time, but I get it. Life's busy. You've been, but the reason why I would say that is because you, we work all day. A lot of us have office jobs. We're sitting all day. We're in bad positions. Um, you know, some of us work construction all day. So then you come to the gym and it's awesome that you're moving, but you spend out of 24 hours of your day, you're spending one hour in the gym doing something beneficial and the rest of it may be in a bad position. Mm -hmm. um, so they say like, if you're sitting, even an hour if you sit one hour it takes um 20 minutes of that hour for your hip flexors to relax and to stretch back out so in a seated position my hip flexors are very shortened so imagine now times that times eight mm -hmm. you know what is that jason 160 <laughs> minutes so almost almost three hours for your hip flexors to relax and stretch back out i um, that's why like you come in and you're just like your hips maybe feel off like so like anyone you know, like it's awesome that you come in and it's better than nothing. That's what I'm trying to yeah. say. But you know, it's, it's something, but something is better than nothing, but we should be doing more. Mm -hmm. And I will also say too, getting started anywhere, eventually, like I get in a rhythm. I don't, you very rarely have a thing in there that I don't know what it is that I have to go look it up and then figure it out and get set up. So now that I know most of my drills, I can run through them really fast. I don't have to constantly be looking at my phone or the board or whatever it is for these things. And I can spend more time in that two minutes of, of doing that. Um, and I'm then decreasing my transition time, which decreases the amount of time I spent on it. So I can get more bang for my buck that way as well. So eventually guys, just like working out, it gets to become more routine and a little bit more fast and you don't have to spend as much time on it. The, the other thing, just like working out is say, your shoulders are very mobile or maybe it's your ankles and you know you can't do something like an overhead squat mm -hmm. when you finally get it to the point where we'd consider it fixed you know it's a lot less to maintain correct it's, yep. it's a lot of upfront work but then once it's done yeah. you know it's a little bit maybe like it is just the class stuff and that will maintain or maybe a little bit more but the total upfront amount is not the same yeah i think and that's and like what you say i think sometimes we a lot of people we ignore a problem because we're like, ah, oh, it's the nagging little shoulder thing. We ignore it, we ignore it, we ignore it, we ignore it. What happens is your body is sending you a, a signal like, hey, there's something wrong here. Whether that's you're, you're using the wrong muscles, so I'm you're overusing these, these ones that aren't meant for this, so you're recruiting the wrong muscles, that's where the stability comes in or the extra drills that we can give. Um, and then, but your body's also sending you a signal, right? And it's telling you like, hey, Stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. What happens is your body gets smart and it says at some point, you're not listening to me, I have to shut you down. So it's either going to lock up that joint or that's when we have tears and all that stuff. Because you didn't listen. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't listen to me, so I'm gonna shut you down. That's how I'm gonna you're gonna to save you, I'm gonna throw your back out. Because I need you to stop doing what you're doing and lay down here so we can recover. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why sometimes you have those injuries is because you're doing something or some type of movement pattern that's going on there. And, we, and then that's where you have to kind of, okay, there's mobility here, but we have to also take, break that down and look at what is the motor pattern you're doing and, and let's hit that up. Yeah. Um, so don't ignore those issues. If you're, if you're having pain, talk to one of the coaches, talk to me, like, don't wait until it's a major issue. Come to me short, and I can usually tell you, like, okay, 
this is what it is. It's you know, it's bicep tendonitis because you're pulling too early or you're doing too much with your biceps. Um, here's some things you can do. Relax it for a week, and you'll be back at it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, that's another thing too. If you have something that's starting to nag, if we address it right away, it's a lot easier than if you let it build up. Yeah. I mean, I'm dealing with two clients right now in the gym who like they've let it go for so long and it got really bad, and that's like okay. You know, and yes, you are going to be on the back burner there with mods for quite a while, and it's going to take me a long time to get you back. And it's, you t look how long it took you to get to this point, and then it's going to take us double time to get you back. Like it took mm -hmm. me eight months yeah. um, to finally be pain free in my shoulder, and then it took me another year to stabilize it and get to where I am now. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, but I ignored it. You know, and that's, for a year or two. Yeah. But Dave, but I learned I from everything it. yesterday. But I learned from it. That was the best part about you know the setback is I learned from it and I've learned so much about the body um, going from that. So mm -hmm. it was my it's my little like yeah it sucked at the time. I wish it never happened, but then I wouldn't be where I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, helping people with that. So with that, let's talk about the best practices. I always like to give people like just three actionable steps. So what's like three things for best practices? Um, that people can do to like get started or maintain or get ahead or well the biggest the biggest thing is you don't know ask you know one of us coaches we all been doing the mobility stuff since we opened so all of you guys are very all of us are very knowledgeable on it um, find your coach ask them say hey here and if they don't know they'll usually refer you to me and then I can give you something um, but you know your body best and that's usually what I tell people is like for me I know what my body needs to do for squat you know, I really need to open up my hips so I did extra banded stuff today knowing that we had squats in the workout if I know I have snatching or handstands I'm really gonna open up my shoulders and my t-spine um, but if you don't know those drills ask me I'll give them to you I'll tell you what you need to do but like again mobility at the end of the workout is better than nothing but I would say like if you have the time come in early you know, most of us do. We come in and we're watching class or we go fiddle around with our phones. Like, grab a lacrosse ball, grab a band, grab and stretch yourself out where you feel that you're tight. Cause, and then, that, so that joint is ready for the workout of the day. Um, or spend time after, a little extra time. Because sometimes you know your body. And if you're like, you know, all the stretches were great, but I didn't hit my hip. My hip is, is a mm -hmm. problem. Go stretch it out or yeah. ask a coach. Yeah, don't be afraid. I know like it can be if you're not really that sure if you're newer, it can be kind of confusing maybe or or uncomfortable to just start something yeah. new. Talk to a coach, ask for, you know, stretches or just experiment. And I get it. Mobility can be painful and it can be kind of boring because I see a lot of people, they do the their three extra workouts or they work out two to three hours a day. And then how much time do they spend on mobility? Like maybe five minutes, maybe, if they do that. Otherwise, yeah. they're like, oh, shoot, I did my three hours. I got to go. I got to go to work. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's awesome that we do extra work, but that means you got to put in extra time on that mobility because you just wrecked your body that much yeah. more. Yeah, so. absolutely. So. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's, that was a good one. I like it. All right. Harbor Park, hit me up. Yes. And not Harbor Park. I'm available for everybody. I like helping. Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's a, actually a very important thing that we need to talk about. Guys, we love helping everybody. You don't have to be a member of the Harbor Park community, specifically in Kenosha or Racine, to get help. So if you guys are listening from um, near, far, or anywhere, go ahead, shoot us a message. Um, you know, Dave's kind of the mobility king around here, but all of us do have some knowledge, and we are more than welcome do to we, help you. Do we have a place that they should... Oh. For yeah. anyone, if they want to get so, in touch with us? Yeah, I mean, you, you can, uh, each one of us owners or coaches have an email through Harbor Park. It's our first name, so, or coach.firstname. So mine would be coach.dave at harborparkcrossfit.com. Corian would be coach.corian at harborparkcrossfit.com, and so on and so forth. Um, you could shoot the gym an Instagram message. Facebook message, whatever you want. Um, if there's a specific coach you want to work with or talk to, um, generally we monitor that and we can always just let that coach know yeah, that so you're reaching out. The gym, the gym's handle is uh, Harbor Park CrossFit. If you want to hit me up directly, mine is Dave underscore Mobility CF Coach. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be tattoos, beards, and barbells. Um, switch that up just so people can know exactly what I do. Um, Jason, where can they find you? Uh, anywhere, Instagram, Jason J. Ewell. Pretty easy. Yeah. Super easy. 
All right. Finest guys, we love talking to all of you. So. All right. Stay classy, Harbor Park, and everyone else. Bye. See you later. All right, everyone, that wraps up another episode of Anchored. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to share it with someone you know. Give us a five-star review on your listening platform that helps us reach more people. And remember to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. We'll talk to you guys later, and stay classy. Thanks for listening to Anchored at Harbor Park CrossFit. If you would like further information about our programs, visit www.harborparkcrossfit.com. We hope you'll tune in next time.